Welcome back to Newswire. We've got a strange NFL preseason schedule, to say the least for you. We've got a game tonight, uh, and then no games on a Friday night in the NFL for preseason. I don't ever remember that before. And then every other game is, well, there's actually a couple on Sunday, I think, but most of the games are on Saturday, Vinny. Sort of bizarre here. I, I don't know what the thinking is behind this, but it's the preseason, so nobody cares. Let's focus on tonight's game. We've got the Patriots taking on the Eagles. And uh, Patriots went through this slog with the Panthers, I believe, last week. It was like an awful game, very low-scoring game. Total is 35 and a half tonight. I mean, I don't even know how you even feel about odds and preseason games. I don't know how anybody bets this stuff. Yeah, I mean, you look at the Patriots, I don't know if they're interested in doing anything all that interesting in the preseason. It was a very low-scoring game last week. I do know the Patriots defense still showing up here without Bill Belichick. Gerard Mayo, there's less transition there, obviously, but now there's more because Matthew Judon is gone. But you look at that, the offense still trying to find its way here with their new pieces, so the quarterback battle, Drake May and the Jacoby Brissett and then a little bit of Joe Milton. It's been up and down and weird there. So I don't know, the Eagles typically are pretty good in these situations. So if I had to go somewhere, i go Eagles and under in this one, but uh, I'm not typically looking for these games because they've been so out of whack with yeah. so many teams just not playing anyone. I think more and more teams are doing that. And maybe this is why the NFL is realizing we don't need to put games on Friday night in the preseason. Yeah, I mean, I, I think our future is two NFL preseason games at most. All right, so uh, interesting yeah. note here over on FanDuel here, a bettable board of the worst team in the NFL going into the season and my gosh, Vinny, the New England Patriots are really big favorites to have the worst record in the NFL. They're three to one, followed by Denver at six to one, Carolina seven to one, the Giants. Wow, where where were they? Were a couple of years ago made the playoffs. They're down to ten to one. I gotta tell you, I, I'm tasty on the Titans being the worst team in the NFL here, Vinny, at twelve to one too. Uh, look, these things are never what they appear to be. We always go into these seasons, Vinny, thinking that teams are only going to, oh, this is the worst team in the league. They're going to win one game. I mean, it's the NFL now, man. This stuff does not happen. Teams win games in the NFL. Some teams just don't show up, especially at the end of the year. Is it a foregone conclusion that Patriots are like the worst team, 3-14, and 14, something like that? I think right now their situation would say they're the worst team. I mean, they don't really have a lot of upside and buzz around them, right? There's not anything that you would say they're going to be better when you move on for Bill Belichick and don't see that. It doesn't look like he's going to start. You're looking at some issues again defensively that are going to happen. I'm not sure they have a lot of reliable pieces there in the front seven now without Judon. And I, I don't see a lot of paths to victories here because the Jets of Aaron Rodgers healthy. I mean, you're looking at the Jets, Dolphins, and Bills. That's six games right there that are going to have a lot of trouble winning this season. So when I, when I look at the Patriots, I don't know exactly what's going on. I don't want to use the word fire sale. But when you look at it, I mean, it doesn't look like they're caring that much about winning in 2024. I think they just want a smooth kind of mental transition into 2025. Yeah, no, it does make sense. Again, someone will challenge them for the bottom, Vinny. We see it every year. Uh, now, as yeah. far as pl uh, teams at the top, maybe to make the postseason, it sounds like you don't see this the same way as me with the Tennessee Titans. You're a little high on them going into the year. Uh, Vinny, odds to make the playoffs. Some interesting notes here on FanDuel, including the Bears as uh, minus 108. But you got a couple of long shots here that you like. Tell me why you like Washington and Tennessee. Yeah, I mean, Jane Daniels has looked fantastic. Early, and uh, Dan Quinn's going to have an immediate effect on that defense. We know that. So these are two elements that we're going to watch. That Jane Daniels changes their offense dramatically with Cliff Kingsbury. They've got some extra defensive take a few the Panthers and Cowboys, who are two of the better defenses overall last year. So they got some personal upgrades. They got a big coaching upgrade on both sides of the ball. Got a quarterback here. Now the Giants might be fading a little bit, and also watch for a Cowboys fade, right? They're gonna be a little brain drained without Dan Quinn. Their offense is limited as well when you look at it overall beyond the passing game. So maybe the Giants and Cowboys open the door a little bit. They're in that division behind the Eagles for a wild card spot. And you look at the Titans, I mean, there's just so much change. And it looks like it's all for the better here. I mean, they kind of the 
Ravens defense. You can't argue with that. I mean, bringing Denard Wilson in. And you look at the Bengals, I mean, there's some parallel there with the Callahan as the coach and just seeing some of the weapons with Calvin Ridley and Tony Pollard and offensive line upgrades. Will Levis is in a real good position. Really just comes down to does Will Levis come through as a second round pick in year two? So if that comes through, the Titans are going to be in the wild card mix in the AFC. Yep, I would agree. Now, uh, one of the more competitive divisions, at least expected to be going into the year, is this three team battle in the NFC North between the Lions, the Packers, and the Bears. I think it's fair to say the Vikings are another one of these teams in a sort of rebuild pseudo year with some talent, but not enough. You like any of those teams in particular? Yeah, I think you have to circle the Bears there. I mean, the Vikings now, I would have actually liked them a little bit more if J.J. McCarthy was available, but yeah, I can't go with a Sam Darnold-led team to think about them as a division favorite here. But Caleb Williams-led team, you can definitely see that. I mean, there's so much. Again, new system, new franchise quarterback, plenty of weapons there. DeAndre Swift and Keenan Allen were the main additions here that are going to help that as well as Roma Dinze. So a lot of weapons. Good, young-looking quarterback right now. A defense that will get better. We saw with Montez Sweat and his effect last year under Matt Eberflus. So this is a team on the uptick. The Packers have a hard schedule, so I think that would create the opening. Where the Lions are there, but the Bears might replace the Packers as a surprise team pushing the Lions here in this division. Yeah, and, and Vinny, before you go, uh, give me a quick storyline for Saturday night with so many NFL preseason games. Any game or player in particular that we should be watching? Yeah, let's uh, watch the Raiders, I guess. I mean, it's a battle that we want to see play out in the right way because, again, the Raiders, even with their quarterback issues, were somewhat competitive last year. So let's see what happens there. Gardner, Minshew, Aiden O'Connell, we'll get an answer there. But the Raiders, again, one of those teams that could go either way, a 7-10 and 10 team or a 10-7 and 7 team. So we want to see how they look, and we'll see a quarterback decision, I think, finally after that game. Yeah, historically one of the toughest teams to predict on a weekly basis, in my opinion. All right, Vinny, great to see you again. Thanks for coming on. All right, thanks, Greg.